badass, badass Donnie Moss in New York City. What are you cooking today, dude? Jane, eggplant rollatini with cashew cheese. So we've got an eggplant. I pre-made some cashew cheese, which is a breeze. You can Google cashew cheese recipes, but I, I, I soak cashews in water for four or more hours. I drain them, I rinse them, and then I process them with, uh, I add some water and then some paprika, salt, pepper, nutritional yeast, whatever you want, and some lemon juice to flavor it. And it turns into uh, cashew cheese, but any old, any old cashew cheese recipe will do. So I'm gonna put the camera down and show you how I slice this eggplant into strips. Whoa, uh, So you can see me. I'm gonna try really hard not to bleed on camera. Um, but I'm not making any promises. So I cut them into like a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, I think. You could see. Wow. And then, what's that? I said, look at you. You look like a, a real chef. Oh, thank you. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put this back up for a minute. So I've got these, uh, these eggplant slices. But the thing is, the eggplant is bitter. And so in order to get some of the bitterness out and the moisture out, we... Sprinkle them with salt on both sides. Yeah. Like yeah. And then I'll just do a couple of them because I've pre-made some of this. And then I move them onto a cookie sheet. I'm sorry, a, a, dry, a drying rack like this. Uh-huh. And so Whoa. they get, so you Look can see I, I did some about 20 minutes ago and you could see it's more flaccid. Don't read anything to that. And um, <laughs> And uh, and you, can you see how wet these eggplant slices are? Yeah. So I take the uh, I take these uh, slices, uh, take a towel, and I just get some. I blot some of the um, water off of it to dry it out. Uh -huh. and you can see you can see it's it's more malleable than when I first cut it. You know, than than these slices are, which are newly cut. And then I grill it. Whoa. So, I'm not going to grill the slices I just cut because I need to leave those out for 20 minutes and Got it. they're not going to last that long. So that's why I pre-salted and drained them on this rack here. Then I'm going to add them onto this. Let's see. Mm. Add them onto the grill pan. Woo, baby. And this will start sizzling in a minute. I didn't exactly let it get hot. Oops, I forgot to dry. So I'll just do a few of them. Well, show me the drying technique because sometimes things get mushy with vegetables. I rinse them off. Okay. You know, it's uh so so like I said, you know, I I I so I sliced these about 20 minutes ago. Can you see the water dripping off of them? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I added salt and salt takes some of the moisture away. And also in this case, for whatever reason, it takes the bitterness away. Uh -huh. And I pack so I pack these slices dry. With a with just like a dish towel, and and then I grill and then I grill them, and so in a second that'll start to sizzle, and I'll have some grill. Oh, well, I can put this up again. I'll have some grill marks on both sides. Uh, are you talking about yourself personally? I am sizzling, Jane. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm going to put the camera up. I don't want to make any mistakes. <laughs> um, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, uh, anyway. So you can, oh, can you see this grilling now? So you can see these are zucchini, uh, these zucchini, I'm sorry, not zucchini, eggplant. I get those two things confused. These eggplant yeah, strips. Yes. And I actually already have them. I've already, I've already rolled some and I have them in the oven because you're not going to want to wait for these because we, we, we roast them in the oven for a few minutes after we, um, after we stuff them with the cashew cheese. So let me come back up for a second. You can see that these are grilling away for a minute. When they're when I have a few grill marks on both sides, they'll be even a little bit softer. I'll will season them and I'll roll them with this with this cashew cheese. You know, cashew cheese can be pretty expensive in the store chain, but it's so inexpensive to make it at home. I buy these unsalted cashews, raw cashews at Trader Joe's. Yeah, and, and like I said, I just I soak them in water for four hours or overnight drain them, rinse them, put them in a food processor and just add water until I get the texture that I want. And then I add salt and pepper and paprika and nutritional yeast and whatever other flavorings you want. In this case, I just, I, I put some paprika on top just to make it look pretty, but you know, I normally I wouldn't do that if I'm by myself.
So you're saying, wait a second, I, this is big news. You can really make cashew cheese at home? It's so, look, I'm not saying that mine is going to be as good as what you buy in a store, you know, uh, like Treeline or Kite Hill, which is almond ricotta. But uh, this, for the purposes of stuffing of a lasagna layer or stuffing uh, these zucchini strips, which you can see are done, I'm actually going to take these off before I burn them. It's perfectly good. It, it's flavorful. It has a nice sort of, I don't know, a cheese, like a, 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 a ricotta texture. That's gorgeous. Tell me again how you did this because this is, I mean, this this is worth the price of admission right here. Really? Um, <laughs> wait, um, are, is there a payment involved in this? Um, so, uh, so, so, Jane. So here's what I did. But the the ca cashews, raw cashews, are pretty inexpensive at Trader Joe's. So I buy them there. I take this whole bag and I put I put the cashews in a, in a in a bowl and I add water to to you know to fill the bowl just sort of to the height of the cashews. Right. Four hours or more. Usually I just do it overnight. I soak them in the water. Not even in the fridge. I just leave them out. The next morning or whenever, four hours later, I, I put them in a colander, rinse them off, and then transfer them into a food processor. You could probably even do it in a blender. And, yeah. and then I slowly add water until I get the texture. In this case, like, uh, you know, you could see it's like, uh, let's see if it, you know, like kind of like a ricotta, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Or, or like a thick hummus. To texture, but I mean, really, it's whatever you want. But in, you know, for this dish, you need it to be, you know, this needs needs to be with the textures. And then I um, and then I just add seasoning till you know lemon. Most of these recipes call for lemon juice, salt, pepper, paprika. Yeah. And then and you know you don't see it because it's being stuffed into these grilled um, uh, eggplant strips. So here, let me put the let me put this back down again. Yeah, I want to see what you're doing, and I'm going to take this banner off. We know who you are by now, and okay. I want to really see what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, do take the banner off, Jane, because it seems like every time I go on your show, uh, every when I leave my house, the paparazzi are just outside waiting for me. And you know, quite frankly, I love you, but this it's exhausting after a while. <laughs> Thank you now, Jane. Now I have my I can go outside and be very uh, anonymous with my man. <laughs> <laughs> this one was a friend from the most brilliant animal rights lawyer, uh, Bonnie Clapper in New York City, who she's just done so much to help the animal rights community. Oh. And, um, so I have this one, and then I have the one that I got um, from PETA. I don't, know if, yeah. I don't know. Can you read it? No, let's. No, you're gonna raise your. You raise your. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm just creating an awkward. What does it say? Question. Um, I can't read it myself. Animal it hurts. markets breed disease. Go vegan. PETA. Yeah. So, and it matches your logo, the Jane on Chain logo. Yeah, I, I love it. I want one of those. Oh, okay, so I'm going to put the camera back down. Okay. And uh, so you can see I just took a dollop, like a spoonful of the cashew cheese, and I'm putting it at the tip of the, uh, of the um, eggplant and rolling it. You can see me rolling it. Oh, wow. I guess that's where the phrase Rolatini comes from. So let me just do two more. Uh, I mean, I think that's what, I, I'm calling this eggplant Rolatini. I'm assuming that that's what this is. Is this one? I didn't grill that one, so I'm not going to do that one. So I roll all three. Then I just take a baking dish like this, fill, uh, put some tomato sauce inside so that it's sort of floating in tomato sauce or cooking in tomato sauce. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Like this? Yes. And then I put it in the um, oven. Okay, let me put this back up again. Oh, you put it in the oven. That's the trick. Until oh, the wow. box starts to sizzle. So I'll put this in. And, you know, knowing that we weren't going to want to wait 15 or 20 minutes, I pre made. Oh, one second, let me pull this better. Uh, you are a master. Oh, wait, you got to show, hold it up. Hold it up. This is incredible. Look at that vegan cashew eggplant rollatini. He made the vegan cheese with raw cashews himself. That it took like five minutes. It's so easy to do. This whole dish, Jane, this whole dish is such a breeze. You, know, you don't need a grill pan also to cook this um, eggplant. 
you know, I sliced the eggplant and you just need to soften it. You could cook it in an oven, a toaster oven. And uh, I just happen to have a grill pan and it's easy to use, but anything to soften, to slightly cook the eggplant, uh, eggplant so that it rolls easily. Do you uh, use oil when you're frying the eggplant? Uh, good question. So um, you, I, I'm, okay, good, very good question. Let me put this down for a minute. Uh, yeah, I for, uh, typically I didn't do it with you because I completely forgot, but here I have my brush and my um, oil, and I typically brush the uh, eggplant on both sides. But you know what? You don't need to. I just accidentally did it without oil, and it worked just fine on this grill pan. Wow. So there's a way to save yourself a few calories. Uh, yeah. Oil, well, if you're oil, oil is the biggest calorie uh, sort of accumulator that there is. So if, yeah. you, can, if you can get rid of the uh, oil or minimize it with a spray, because I use a spray. There's something called a Misto that you literally put the oil in there and then you go like this. Yeah. Uh, and then you spray it. It, um, it has very little oil, but you get that feeling of having oil on the food without drenching it in oil and then you keep the calories down. You know, and in this case, Jane, there's, I'm sure there's oil in the tomato sauce that I used. Mm -hmm. So you don't, and you can use any brand of tomato sauce, obviously. So I, I really, uh, this is the first time I've ever cooked this dish because, you know, I'm, I'm working quickly because I know we're live, but that I haven't used oil in it and it just wasn't a problem. And then Jane, what I like to do with this is, well, if I had it, I would sometimes sprinkle parsley on it to make it a little prettier. Mm -hmm. but, um, I also have here one of my favorite condiments is follow your heart parmesan. Oh. That, and so, that is so good. Can you hold that up? Oh, yeah, of course. That's Sorry. One of the, I'd say, most delicious. It, it is so delicious. It's follow your heart vegan parm. It's like indistinguishable from. Um, yes, totally. From, it's shocking. Totally. So, so I'll uh, sprinkle some on top and whatever. It's just a nice little. Yeah. Nice little uh, okay, so I'm going to put this back. Oh, should we do a taste? Should we have someone oh, taste? Oh, God. It? Yeah, baby. Okay, hold on a second. Oscar? Oscar. And by the way, uh, yeah. I want to tell you that um, Donnie Moss has an absolutely incredible, incredible um, media outlet called theirturn.net. We even ha we haven't had a chance to discuss it, but I'd love to hear some of the things that you're doing. But let's get the taste test done first. Okay. So I have my uh, friend Oscar. Come say hi, Oscar. Hey, hi. hi. Oh, wait, we get into the camera. <laughs> Oscar, Hi, Oscar. I don't know why he's wearing a mask. We're in a pod, and okay. uh, he's Oscar is one of my many lovers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, here is uh, I'm going to give Oscar a taste. So here, let's plate this. Okay, so, uh, hold, it up, hold it up. There we go. That is gorgeous. That is so gorgeous. Now I mm. noticed you didn't put a lot of seasoning inside the cashew when you made the cashew cheese. Like I would have had a tendency to put a lot of like. Oh my gosh, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, this I mean, honestly, you could do I, I I salt and pepper the most important way. First, let's let Oscar have a taste of this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, even if it tastes like you found like scooped it out of a sewer, <laughs> put a smile on your face. Okay. And, uh this is eggplant con uh with cashew cheese. Oh, it might be very hot. Listen, I'm sorry. Mm. Really? Oh, he's, either yeah, a good actor. he's either a good actor or he really likes That's it. Good, delicious. Very good. See, ha have you ever had cashew cheese before? No. First this time. My first time. Okay. Good. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Oscar, would you be willing to eat this way? If if it was delicious every day, leave the animals off the plate. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Okay, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on Oscar. Yeah, Jane, I mean we have, uh, I mean, yeah, I would also use um, garlic garlic powder, onion powder. I mean, the things that you're mentioning, I have right here at my fingertips, uh, paprika. And so, yeah, you can season cashew cheese with so many different things. Uh, I just, yeah, it's just, it's, it depends on what your taste is. It's really hard to go wrong with some of these like Italian recipes. It's like lasagna. You kind of could put whatever you want in it and it, and it always comes out good. I just am blown away by the fact that you just taught us how to make vegan cheese using cashews and pretty much just soak them overnight and drain it. Soak them, drain them, and then uh, rinse them, and then process them in the blender, 
with uh, water until you get the, the consistency, the thickness that you want, and then just add in all those seasonings. And then I freeze it. I put them in oh. into I put them into can containers like this, Let's and see. then and then uh, you know the plastic that I you know just have unfortunately. Wow. And, but I reuse it. I I freeze them in I that. Do too. I I reuse all any plastic I use. I'm on a campaign to eliminate all plastic. Uh, I just found an alternative right here. Just by the by, you can now get. And I'm just going to show you because this is so cute. I just really felt guilty that I was using plastic, uh, you know, dish dish soap containers. Yeah. And look at this, clean cut. And then this is really pretty, right? You put it in here, and then you just get these containers refilled. And this works beautifully. You and never that soap, that's soap yeah, that comes it's in soap. liquid. It's soap. Uh -huh. It comes in like that. And what about a good old fashioned Jane? Good old fashioned bar of soap. I have these on, on our sinks now. Just a plain old I bar. I do soap. too. I have I have a couple of bars of soap too. But you know, with the pandemic, constantly washing and cleaning, I did feel. Yeah. Now you're putting me to shame. <laughs> what pandemic? Uh, <laughs> Jane, should we show some people the inside of my fridge? Because I have so many fun yes. things here. Okay, let's oh, see yeah. how do I how do I do, I do that? Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, I'm gonna. Yeah, oh, there we go. I didn't, really, I didn't. Okay, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, it's basically so, a couple of my favorite things right now. Yeah. This Thousand Island. I, you know, I grew up going to go. Oh God, look at me. I grew up going to Jewish delis, and I love Thousand Island dressing. And follow your heart makes inexpensive vegan Thousand Island delicious. Okay. Of course, if you haven't had Just Egg yet, I make. If you make Just Egg for people, they will not know that this isn't real scrambled eggs or however you want to prepare it. It is shocking. Yeah. My mayonnaise. Look, all of these things that we just didn't have when I went vegan 15 years ago. It's the, the Trader Joe's Caesar vegan Caesar dressing is labeled vegan Caesar. Have you had that one, Jane? Hey, I will match you. Okay. I'm going to match you your vegan Caesar with, um, here it is, uh, my oh, vegan... Yeah. This is what I love. This so one. I've had that one too. Follow Your Heart Vegan Ranch is so good. Jane, oh. we're spoiled for choice. Do you remember? I mean, I, I, I went vegan in 2005, Labor Day weekend. So I think it's a little bit more than 15 years now. And I didn't really, you know, I wasn't a huge fruit and vegetable eater. I'm embarrassed to say. I wasn't sure what I was going to eat. Um, and now all of the things that I- What do you mean? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I, I ate garbage and now I feel like being vegan has opened up a door for not only a new way of eating, but I can also, if I want, go back to my old way of eating, you know, Let's because I'm going to pull something out of my fridge and then you pull something out of your, it's kind of like playing doctor when you were a kid. I'm going to pull something out of my fridge. You pull okay. something out of your fridge. Okay. okay. Let's go. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Ah, here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. I just got this. This is black bean pasta wow. that is extremely high in protein, extremely low in calorie. It's so filling. I made a box and I had it for dinner last night. And look how much is left over. I could eat this all week. I could sprinkle it in salads. Wow. It is delicious and it's extremely high in protein. Wow. You know, I remember as a kid seeing on the menu squid ink pasta, which was black. Was that real squid? I don't even know what that meant. But now you could eat black bean pasta, which has the same look. And once you put the sauce on it, who the hell is going to taste this squid ink anyway? And they also have edamame, uh, the same thing, green pasta. It's really good. And it's like super high in protein. OK, your turn. Okay. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Uh, so I, I've been buying for lunch, cause, you know, we're all spending so much more time at home. I'm making many more meals at home than in the past. Miyoko's um, oops, okay. uh, uh, cheese slices. Ooh. So we've been getting pepper jack and, wow. um, and the cheddar. Oh my God. They're so good. Oh uh, my God. The, okay. I'm having fridge envy. Here's okay. something that I use when I can't get the uh, follow your heart. This is go veggie, um, dairy free, you know, uh, go veggie Parmesan. It's not as good. 
But yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And I buy it all the time because I put it in soups. Uh, the follow your heart is thicker is what I meant. They're all good. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, yeah, the follow your heart is really like Parmesan Reggiano. It's so right. weird how, how real it tastes. It's so for, any, for anybody who thinks that they can't make the switch or start to start to make the switch to plants, increase the amount of plants, you've got all of these, these foods at your fingertips that we just didn't have in the past. Mozzarella shreds. When I went vegan. Hold that up into the camera. No, a little <laughs> in front of your face, not to block your face. Oh, but yeah. Anything to block my face. Bio Life is one of the best. I mean, they're all good, but Vile Life, they nailed it, man. They are. Oh, and Miyoko's. Miyoko's as well. Unbelievable. Absolutely. It's hard to go wrong. So many of these brands are delicious. So now I can make pizzas and quesadillas and all of these things that, again. How do you keep your figure? What's that? How do you keep your figure? Oh, I thought you said my finger. How do I keep my finger? Oh, I don't actually eat any of this stuff. This is just for Green Unchained. Um, uh, so yeah, so I wanted to show you the that while I while I go get something else. Okay, I, I haven't tried these yet. I haven't tried these yet, but I ordered this. I got this. Oh. I'm doing Instacart. This what I'm doing is putting it in the air fryer so that you're not grilling it with a lot of oil. Again, I just spray the misto and then put these in there. This is. Uh, you know, you don't want to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but it's, uh, they're basically the alternative to chicken wings. Very good. And Very good. In fact, we just bought, just to try something new, and I don't know that it's new, but it's new for us. Uh, the same brand. These are, oops, wait, can you see it? Um, uh, I think yeah. it's mandarin. Oh. oh, you've got the mandarin. Okay. So we each have different kinds. Now. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. oh. Wait, is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. Oh, okay, because you're not even there. Yeah. So this one, these are field roast, which I think started with sausages years ago, you know, plant-based sausages, and now fruffalo wings. I don't know what the FR stands for, so it's obviously a play on buffalo, but what is yeah. fruffalo? Uh, fruffalo wings, uh, fruit? Is it jackfruit? No, I don't think so. I don't know what, no, I don't know. Field roast. That's the end. Field FR. roast, fruffalo. Okay, yeah. I, I, oh, I'm having uh, frozen food envy. I want that, fruffalo wings. This I like. It's oldie but goodie. These were one of the first veggie bolognese that came out. Wow. I happen to like them. They're fabulous. You put them on with a sandwich or whatever, or I'm into rice cakes lately with, uh, you could use veggie mayo or just, uh, Mustard, mustard, and uh, it's it's delicious. So you know, if you're if you want a sandwich, when I fly on an airplane, which I haven't done now in a long time, but I would always have a sandwich uh, to take on board just in case there's no vegan options. And of course, every time I brought the sandwich, there was vegan op options. Every time I forgot, there weren't. <laughs> so go figure. But I would have this sandwich. It lasts for quite a while. Like if you're on an eight hour flight, you have this with vegan cheese. You know, when they're waking you up, we've got three hours left. You can have it. it it's perfect. So that's that's what I use that for. I love it. And last but not least, uh, by the way, the fact that we could even eat deli sandwiches like the kinds we grew up yeah. with. Again, yeah. like who knew that that was going to be an option for us? Uh, just demonstrating how easy it is. And if and if anybody thinks they're going to miss hamburgers, oops. Uh, the, be, the, uh, is, I have it too. Hold on. The, the, you could, I guess this is, comes in a, in a, it's it's quote ground beef. And I don't know, this is, I don't know if it's the 16 ounces, no soy, no gluten. It's pea, I, I match you. I match you. It's pea protein, right, Jane? Yeah, mostly pea protein. Uh, water, pea protein. Uh, canola, rice protein, uh, cocoa butter, mung beans, potato starch, apple. It's it's so good. It's I remember, so good. I, so beyond beyond meat, if you feel like you need a burger, don't don't reach for the ground animal burger. Try a Beyond Burger. There's so many different brands now. It's not just Beyond. I and fun playing this game, I don't want to stop. Okay. Oh, no, well, so, you won because I ran out of stuff. What? Smart, smart dogs. Delicious. Sadly, I won't run out of stuff. I could go on for hours. Here, smart dogs. Yeah, I mean, all, all the you know, and and 
these products are getting better and better, although it's hard to imagine them getting better than they already are. But truth be told, even years ago, when I put just a, a good old fashioned like veggie burger on a bun with lettuce and tomato and ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise or whatever, it's, it was uh -huh. delicious then. Now it's like now it's like you're eating a beef burger. It's really shocking. I don't want people to think that all I eat is processed food. I have grapes. I have my melons. Yes, I love your melons. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I love your nuts. Um, <laughs> I've got bananas. Hold on, bananas. I just don't want people to think that I'm. A oh, shucks! I dropped the melon. I don't think it injures though. It's right. I don't think it'll be injured. I can still have it. Um, I have bananas. I'm eating a lot of fruit, a lot of fresh fruit and frozen fruit. Obviously, we should all be eating as many whole food, you know, plant-based whole foods as possible. We want. We're only yeah. eating processed foods, but you know, we live. This is where we live. This is, you know, we have access to all of these things. And so, of course, we're going to eat some of them. Um, Let's talk. We, this was fun. I want to do this with other their, with other uh, Lunch Break Lives. Have people show their some of their vegan stuff in the fridge. We didn't plan this. It was just spontaneous combustion. And I also want to show you what's in my closet because I'm wearing the, this shirt, which I think is so appropriate. Are you coming out of the closet? Um, oh, no, who, oh, no, no, I'm not gay. Um, so... <laughs> So the, right now, can you see it? Yeah, close all slaughterhouses. Right now, with this pandemic, one of the things that I'm amazed by is a lack of public discourse around how to prevent how to prevent another one. It's shocking to me that we're not talking about that because ju just because we're in one right now doesn't mean that another zoonotic disease can't spill over from animals to humans right now in a slaughterhouse, in a factory farm, at a, at a live animal market. And there's a, a, a virus, a pig virus right now in China that has jumped from the pigs to the pig slaughter workers or the pig farm, whatever they, the pig workers. The question is, will it jump from person to person, from human to human? But we had uh, mad cow disease, swine flu, avian flu, they can all come back, different mutations, they're all zoonotic diseases that stem from our abuse of animals, primarily in the food system. Remember, COVID popped up amongst people who had visited a wet slaughter market. SARS in the early 2000s also popped up amongst people who had been at a wet slaughter market in another province in China. You had, um, you know, every one of these pandemics, they're, they're connected to animals in the food system in some way, shape or form. I mean, truth be told, Jane, the, the cruelty alone is reason enough for all of us to switch to non-animal foods. The idea that in 2020, we even have such a place as a slaughterhouse is to me surreal and future generations are gonna look back and they will say, can you believe they used to have slaughterhouses? In the same way that we look back on past atrocities with absolute shock and disgust. But yeah, so much more than just cruelty now. When you and I, I was thinking back, you know, 12 years ago or whenever we started to, we became friends and started to work together, you, we were so focused on the cruelty. And then over the years, you know, Cowspiracy came out and what the health. And so the environmental issues and the health issues. And wow, that's convenient that you had that right there. Oh, uh, because I interviewed one of the executive producers yesterday, Jim Greenbaum. Oh, right. Uh, and so, so, there are so many reasons, you know, and, and as you like to say, Jane, animal agriculture isn't just horrible because of how cruel it is. Or it's, it's devastating also because of its impact on the climate, on the ocean, you know, it creates ocean dead zones. It, it Our forests are being depopulated, uh, de we're deforested. Actually, trees are, are being torn you down. Like percent of all wildlife in the last 50 years and we are on track to wipe out 100% by 2026. Um, this I documented in my film, Countdown to Year Zero, which is on Amazon Prime. And the New York Times just today did a whole story that was essentially an, uh, an apologist for animal agriculture contending that we can keep our cattle and still make it environmentally okay. Uh, it was really disheartening, especially coming after you and I both attended Feeding the World, the New York Times virtual talk on world hunger that didn't even mention a plant-based solution when 
Animals eat at least 36% of all food, all crops produced on this land, and they produce far less than they eat. And then when they finally had to address the question, because we asked, uh, they gave a very non-committal answer, like that's not the solution, sort of dismissing it. This is uh, you know, the most influential newspaper in the world at taking this attitude. So we all have to use social media to get around it because it's unconscionable. And it's, it's really a carnist society where people are so prejudiced uh, toward the, the acceptance, the privilege, the assumption that they have the right to forcibly impregnate, abuse, torture, and kill animals for whatever reason they want, whether it's food or entertainment or research or clothing, that going up against that mindset is, is very difficult. And even papers that are supposed to be objective, they crumble to the societal norms. That's why it's so great we have your publication, theirturn.net, the social justice movement of our time. Tell us, Donnie, it's theirturn.net. People can see it by going to theirturn.net. And um, tell their us turn about- on Facebook and Twitter also, at their turn. Yeah, tell us about what's happening with your uh, news organization, because you're doing so much. So we're, you know, in New York City, uh, I, I, uh, their turn, we work on campaigns and, um, and then I produce animal uh, videos documenting the animal rights movement. So last night was, you know, two in one. We organized a protest uh, to call attention or to demand accountability from people who were mistreating chimpanzees at a chimpanzee sanctuary in Georgia. And I'm going to take all the footage from that protest and put it into a, a short highlights video and get that out. And that you know, will be used to educate the public about what's going on and to, ma to demand ac accountability from people who are mistreating the animals. And, and so you are also a genius at using Twitter to get the word out. Tell us a little bit about that because I've learned from you. You know, you, uh, years ago when I was working on a campaign to compel to compel our the New York Blood Center, which is the biggest blood bank in the country, to pay for the care of 66 chimps who the organization abandoned on six islands in Liberia. You know, I, I, I ran a two year campaign to, to demand accountability there and to demand that they, they, they spend the money to a very wealthy organization to spend the money on these chimps. And I was using Twitter a bit and I was tweeting the New York Blood Center's corporate donors, one of which was Citigroup. And Citigroup um, called me in for a meeting to discuss the issue, which was really surprising because corporations so frequently ignore us until we escalate, escalate, escalate. But early on in the process, Citigroup called me in and said that it was, it, and, I, and they said, the reason we brought you in is because of the impact of your tweets. And that's when I knew, I think all the social media, media platforms have their place, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but reporters and corporations seem to favor Twitter. And in some of the advocacy that I do, those are my targets. So I've really taught myself how to use Twitter, how to use the right hashtags, how to tag the right people and, and to maximize the use of Twitter. Uh, so, uh, you know, unfortunately I don't have that blue verification check that Twitter gives to celebrities. Um, thankfully you have one, Jane. I don't know if I, I, I guess I do. I don't know if I have it on Twitter. I have it on Facebook. You do have it on Twitter. Oh. I look at it with envy oh. every day. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Uh, uh, but uh, I, I really admire your ability and what you taught me just for those at home, if you really want to have uh, an impact, when you retweet, you retweet with a comment, you attach a photo, and then you can add nine tags to that photo. Hit retweet with comment. Correct me if I'm wrong, Donnie. Add a photo and then tag nine people on that photo. Correct? Even if you don't want to add a photo, Jane, if you click retweet with comment, you can tag people right there. You have 200 some odd characters in a tweet. So you could say even I agree with this and then tag other people who you think should see it. And, and that will call their attention to the original tweet. So, so I'm sure there are YouTube tutorials on using Twitter or making the use, best use of Twitter. And it's not the right social media platform for everybody. You know, if you're trying to reach younger people, then Instagram might be the place to go. 
But for the type of advocacy that I do, uh, Twitter seems to be the most powerful social media platform. So please check out theirturn.net. This is Donnie Moss's platform. He does so much work. I don't even know when you sleep because you're out there covering protests. And then I will, te I will text you like at two in the morning, your time. And you're like, I'm editing. Um, you edit uh, pretty much around the clock. That's nice of you to say, Jane, but most of the time I'm just kind of running around the house frantically um, accomplishing nothing. <laughs> but no, but you know, yeah, I mean, I, I really feel passionately about this work and I know you do too. And when you care about what you're doing, you're going to, you know, you're going to work hard. Uh, so thankfully I'm in a position where I can do this um, all day, every day. And uh, I don't take it for granted one bit. I want to be a voice for these animals like, like you are a voice for the voiceless. Look, we all started, you and I started at, pretty much simultaneously without even realizing we were starting the same type of um, effort, a media organization. You went into producing these high quality videos and I went into doing more live here, there and everywhere with the volunteer contributors, but we both have the same goal. And there are others that have popped up as well. I mean, plant-based news is knocking it out of the park. You've got uh, veg news, which is extraordinary. You've got Live Kindly, you've got Lady Freethinker, you've got the Dodo, which is far softer and doesn't really cover hardcore animal rights, but gets people in the tent. And if I've left anybody out, I apologize. There's so many of these because people are craving real information about what's really happening. You know, the mainstream media was forced to cover the fact that COVID-19, one of the hotspots is uh, slaughterhouses, but they don't even call them slaughterhouses. The word slaughter is verboten. They call them meat packing plants. Or processing. Pro food processing plants, meat processing. It's almost like people are absolutely terrified to acknowledge that these animals are dying, okay? That these animals are dying for this food. They don't want you to know it. They don't want you to know that there are beings with eyes and hearts who experience pain. And these are two of your uh, videos who, you know, go through, this is the average factory farm chicken. Look at the condition they're in. If that's appetizing to you, please go to see a therapist. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason all of these factory farms and slaughterhouses are like down very long driveways behind high gates and have surveillance cameras all around, you know, to look at us, not to look inside. There's a reason they don't want the world to see what's going on in these places. Was it uh, Paul McCartney who said if slaughterhouses or factory farms had windows, we'd all be vegetarians? Oh yeah, there's a lot of good uh, phrases like that. I've got this one as one of my favorites. Before you label me extreme, take a look inside a slaughterhouse. And of course, what we're going through right now uh, is a pandemic based on a zoonotic disease, jump from bats to pangolins and erupted in a wet slaughter market in China. And that's not to target China because we've had uh, pandemics that started here, uh, in the early 20th century and the Spanish uh, flu started in North America. Uh, even yes. though the Spanish flu, I mean, Jane, in New York City alone, we have somewhere between 70 and 80 retail storefront slaughterhouses. Right here, this is for you. Where people are physically handling live animals in a wet market setting. If if a disease, a zoonotic disease, jumps from animal to human in one of these slaughterhouses in these densely populated areas, it could spread like wildfire before anyone even knows they have it. The idea that they're still open with everything we know about the risks that these live animal markets or wet markets pose, it's just surreal. Has COVID-19 not been disruptive enough I mean, the consequences of our behavior are, are staggering and we're still not learning. Uh, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Now, this is an occasional article from the New York Times, an opinion piece um, that, that gets, gets it right, but so much of the other coverage gets it wrong. What is your thought on that? Look, I think that, you know, as you've taught me, Jane, because you worked in, you know, mainstream media for so long, I mean, the advertisers uh, who are selling these meat dairy, fish products, um, you know, in some ways call the shots because the networks don't want to alienate their advertisers. 
Um, but you know, there is some coverage. It's not just social media. As you just showed, there is some mainstream media coverage of it, not nearly enough relative to the problem. Um, but I will say this, you know, we're, we will potentially end the slaughter of animals in the not too distant future if these, la if these lab grown uh, meats and these plant, you know, which, which are, are cultivated from a few cells and they can grow muscle and tissue, which is actual animal meat, but taking the animal out of the equation. Between that, which is on the horizon and the plant-based meats, which are getting better and better, I really think that, you know, they might take, you know, sentient animals out of the equation in the not too distant future. And also we're disrupting the false notion that in order to have muscle, you need to eat animals. This is vegan bodybuilder, Ryan Nelson. Take a look at him. Okay. And of course the movie, the game changers, which we mentioned before, um, some of the most successful athletes in the world. You got to watch this film. I mean, look, I've done my own TV series about vegan cooking, but this game changer film, unbelievable game changer for the culture. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it. Um, it, the, the strongest man in Germany whose plant base is in it. Um, big portions of the Tennessee Titans football team who are plant based are in it. I mean, it's unbelievable. And so the facts are out there. I see new media um, embracing this uh, that's subscriber based. If you look at Amazon and Netflix, they're putting a lot of this content on their platform because they're subscription based. They don't have to worry as much about advertisers. It's the old school media uh, like the New York Times that has to, uh, they don't have to, but they're they're obviously advertiser based to a, they're subscription based, but they're also advertiser based. You know, they're, they're a melting pot. Whereas uh, your standard cable television network is advertiser based. It's ratings based, but it's also advertiser based. So when, when you have advertisers in the equation, you're going to get um, messages that are tainted by that. I mean, I often have the news on in the background, when you know i've got this little uh tv it, <laughs> and i have the news on in the background when i'm cooking and I, it could be one commercial after another you know where's the beef or you know not that that's the phrase anymore but the, the uh, fridays and arby's and you know there are companies that are advertising meat on tv and so you know that could explain at least partially why you know you don't see these really important stories like closing slaughterhouses might prevent the next pandemic well, first of all, the younger generation isn't watching. Sorry, you dated yourself by saying you watch TV, but the younger generation is not watching television as much. They're on social media, so they're not getting, even if they put a state commercial, it doesn't have the intensity of, even that's a small screen, a, a, a screen of that size, much less a screen of this size. So I think there's hope there. Uh, I think new media is, you know, there's, uh, I think Vice has looked into certain things. The Intercept has looked into uh, animal abuse. So there is some good journalism being done, uh, connecting the dots between animal abuse, factory farming, uh, habitat destruction, wildlife extinction, human world hunger, human disease, climate change, pandemics, the list goes on and on and on. But Donnie, I just want everybody sign up for theirturn.net. It is a great, great resource. You can forward some of these articles to your friends because you put a lot of detail into your stories, uh, evidence and facts. So um, it's so I miss you. Obviously, I would normally see you a couple of times a year because of the pandemic. I haven't seen you since uh, Christmas, yeah, since, uh, like New Year's Eve or something like that. Right. So hopefully we can see each other at some point in the, in the future. I don't know when, but that Zoom well, that, would be, that would be awfully nice. Um, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, I guess in conclusion on my end, I think that uh, Mother Nature sent us all of us to our rooms to reflect on. I don't remember where I read that, but I thought it was so clever to reflect on our behavior and to consider changes that might protect the planet. And um, and so we're all paying a price now for, for, you know, our collective bad behavior. And hopefully we can make some changes that will enable us to see each other next Christmas. 
Yeah, so those who are feeling oppressed by the pandemic, who are angry, frustrated, maybe feeling victimized, and there are victims, tragically, I can't even keep up with how many, it's well over 200, I think it's 220,000, 20, 221,000 people dead in the United States, you know, four times at least the amount of uh, uh, people who died in the Vietnam War at this point, and it's skyrocketing, and every time I open my computer in the morning, it's like, the crisis has expanded. If you're feeling like a victim, think about it this way. This is a zoonotic disease. If we lived in a plant-based society, we would not be here right now. Okay. So take that power that you have three times a day to make a difference and take dead animals and the menstrual period of chickens, which is an egg and the breast milk of a cow, which is milk, dairy milk off your plate and then you're part of the solution. That's what you know, I- And it opens up all these doors. Plant-based eating is delicious and flavorful and interesting. Also, yeah. it's an upgrade. It's not a sacrifice anymore. It's truly an upgrade. It really is. I like that. You better make a meme on that one. It's an okay. upgrade, not a sacrifice. Okay. All right, Johnny, I love you. I miss Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for doing it.